Stephanie from Back to the Passport. Today, I'm sharing our video diary, or vlog, of our weekend in Paris. We were there Saturday afternoon to Tuesday afternoon and had two full days in the city. We flew to Paris on a Friday and arrived at around 2 p.m. on Saturday. We took a taxi into the city, checked into the hotel, and freshened up after our long day of travel. We were lucky enough to stay in the Latin Quarter at the Hotel du College de France, which was a lovely hotel that had nice city views. We wandered around a bit, just orienting ourselves to our neighborhood, before checking out the menus at the nearby restaurants. We opted for dinner at La Petite Perigordon, where we got a carafe of rosé, started with escargot, and then I ordered the beef tartare, and Rick got the duck that had a delicious crispy skin. Afterward, we walked around some more and made our way to see, well, what we could, of Notre Dame. We weren't ready for bed just yet, so we found another bistro for some more French wine at Les Dendres, as well as a chocolate cake. We lingered over our wine and dessert and just enjoyed a Saturday night in the city. We were able to stay up until 9.30 before finally succumbing to jet lag and calling it a night. Sunday was our first full day in the city, and it was jam-packed. Luckily, we didn't have anything booked until mid-morning, as we knew we'd still be feeling the effects of the time change. Our first activity of the day was a visit to the Eiffel Tower and a ride up to the summit. Unfortunately, by the time we were going to book tickets, the main website was sold out, but we did find some tickets on Get Your Guide and opted for a combo ticket that included the summit and a Seine River cruise, which we could book any time we wanted. We met up for a tour at 11.20 and got our tickets for the visit to the tower. The meeting point was easy enough to find, and then a guide walked us to the entry point and we were off on our own. We went up to the second floor to take in the views before going all the way up to the top. We ended up buying some champagne at the summit and enjoyed the cool breeze and amazing views over the city. We went back down to the second floor and then took the stairs the rest of the way. I've been up the Eiffel Tower three times now, and it's the first time I took the stairs down. It was actually pretty neat being inside and getting a closer view of the ironwork. We had plenty of time between our Eiffel Tower visit and our next ticketed activity, so we stopped for lunch at a cafe that had outdoor seating, where I got a glass of rosé and Rick got an entire liter of Coke Zero. He got a croque monsieur and I got a croque madame, and we enjoyed a leisurely lunch. We then made our way over to the Inception Bridge because we're super cool people and recreated a scene from Parks and Rec. We then took the metro over to our next activity. We had tickets for a 4.30 entry to the Paris Catacombs. While a bit macabre, I think the catacombs are so neat. It's pretty impressive to see how all the millions, or maybe billions, of bones are stacked and how the catacombs came to be. We got our audio guides and descended into the Empire of Death. After exploring the underground, it was time to return to the land of the living and get a snack before our next activity. We found a little spot for some wine and cheese and relaxed in the shade, as even though it was September, it was quite warm in Paris still. Next up was a visit to the Montparnasse Tower to enjoy its panoramic view. I had never heard of the Observation Tower before, but it showed up in the Get Your Guide app as a recommended activity, and I'm so glad it did. It was only about 20 euros per person and the views were truly incredible. We timed our visit with sunset, so we got up there at 7.30 with an expectation of sunset at 8.30 p.m. We checked out the views on the floor we got off on, but then there was a staircase leading to an outside viewing platform. If you like aerial views over a city, you have to check this place out. My photos of the sunset from there don't even look real. They're so beautiful. As soon as the sun dipped below the, bar below the horizon, it was time to make our way back to our hotel and change, chug some water, and then head off for our next activity. We were quite busy on our first day there and had activities booked from 11.30 in the morning to 11.30 at night. We jumped back on the metro and made our way to the Montmartre neighborhood as we had a reservation to visit the Moulin Rouge. 
I had seen the show a few years ago with some girlfriends and remember loving it and wanted Rick to experience it. And we definitely got an experience as we were seated right next to the stage. I mean, Rick's back was literally touching the stage. And he had some boa feathers in his hair when we left the theater. No one kicked him in the face during the famous can-can, at least. I'll be honest, I do not remember getting into the theater being as much of a maze as it was this time around. We got there pretty close to when doors opened, and were lined up outside, and then joined a line inside, and then turned a corner and joined another line, then followed that line down some stairs, around a corner, and back up some stairs, before going back down some stairs, to get to the coat check and main doors. I know you get half a bottle of champagne during the show, but I truly don't remember it being that complicated or walking that far when I went there with my friends back in 2016. But whatever, the show was still amazing, and I wish I was half as talented as some of those dancers and acrobats. If you like variety acts or cabaret shows, this is a must-do in Paris, and I'm so glad I got to go back and see the show again. After the show, we hailed a taxi and made our way back to the hotel to get a good night's sleep. On Monday, we started our next full day in Paris with breakfast at a patisserie in the Latin Quarter, the Maison Forest. We made the most of it by ordering two lattes, a baguette sandwich, a pan au chocolat, and a macaron framboise. We took our time eating and drinking and savoring every single bite. Afterward, we got on the metro and headed back toward the Eiffel Tower, as we still had our flexible ticket for our Seine cruise. We wandered around for a bit, and then took the one o'clock cruise down the river. The cruise was an hour, and then we bought some waters and walked along the riverfront for a bit. stop at our hotel to change for dinner and charge our phones before doing a progressive dinner at places that looked interesting. We stopped first at Le Parvis near Notre Dame and ordered some champagne and escargot. We then each had a glass of wine and soaked up the late afternoon sun. We then continued down the street to La Dame de Paris where I treated myself to more beef tartare and fries and wine of course and Rick got a benedict which he paired with some rosé. After all that wine and good food, it was time for our next booked activity, a ghost tour of Paris. We were booked on the 730 Paris Dark City Secrets walking tour that covered the dark and macabre history of Paris, as well as a stop or two at haunted sites. We stopped at Rue de Chantre, which is said to be the most haunted street in Paris, as it's home to little kid ghosts. Unfortunately, some children living at the orphanage on this street perished in a flood in the 1900s. There's even some street art of a ghostly child on the street. Hear a lot of voices and went on to a different city, Orléans, in France. So, two stories. The first one is that he said that he started, you know, working on the doors, fell asleep. When he woke up, the job was done. <laughs> Live executions with, a big, you know, a big audience. We didn't have theaters, we didn't have Netflix, we needed a way, you know, to entertain ourselves. So... One of the things they did is that they created the wheel. On our Paris Dark City Secrets walking tour, we also learned about the Sweeney Todd of Paris, the man who was killed for being a wizard, how the mafia would use dead fish to cover up their killings, the 1981 cannibal of Paris, the duchess who perfected poisons and was indeed fed her own poison, and then we visited the site of the hanging tree and where the guillotine sat and heard how Parisians were annoyed that the guillotine was too quick in killing people. It was a great tour, and we had a great guide named Leo. I loved learning about the darker side of the City of Light, plus we got some incredible sunset views on our tour. After the tour, Leo made some suggestions of bistros or wine bars to visit, as well as where to go to get amazing gelato, and I am not one to pass up ice cream, so off we went to get some gelato at Amarino. I got two flavors, pistachio and salted butter caramel, They were both excellent. We took our ice cream on the go and stopped at the bank along the Seine. We finally returned to our hotel and went to bed. 
We had one final morning in Paris, and we went back to the patisserie near us for another pan of chocolat, two more lattes, and then we decided to try the eclair, the almond croissant, and a quiche to add a savory item to our breakfast buffet. We then came across a farmer's market on our way back to our hotel, and of course I found some souvenirs, like an amazing scarf with kittens on it, and then a small notebook with a stamp of the Eiffel Tower on it. We went back to the hotel so I could cram my purchases into my suitcase as we had to make our way to Gare du Nord to catch our 112 train to London. We had an amazing weekend in Paris and crammed quite a bit in, in two and a half-ish days. We still have so much more to see and can't wait until we're back in Paris again. Please feel free to tell us what activities are must-dos when we return to Paris. I've been to Versailles before, but now I think Rick is eager to check out the home of the famous, or infamous, King and Queen of France. Thanks for watching our Paris vlog, and be sure to check out our blog at backtothepassport.com for more travel content. Ciao!